Well, good morning, MBE. It's Monday, September the 28th, and this is your Call of the Wild. Well, looking at this morning's weather, much uh, better start to this week's weather than last as far as the morning temperature. We've got a mix of sun and cloud this morning, but a nice plus 11 to start the day. We'll see that same mix of sun and cloud throughout the afternoon and a high of plus 18 degrees. So it should be a great day. Rest of the week looking not that bad either. Tuesday, cloudy with a small chance of showers, plus 13. Wednesday, a mix of sun and cloud. We'll get to 15 on that day, which should be good. Thursday, looking at cloudy with sunny breaks, a high of plus 19, so probably the warmest day of the week. And Friday, we will have a mix of sun and cloud, still a nice temperature at plus 18. So a great week, especially since we are moving into the month of October and any temperatures we can get in the teens is a good thing. So enjoy the week. Every day here at MBE, of course, is an important day, but we've got a couple days this week that are special and even more important. And the first one I want to talk about is Orange Shirt Day. I'm going to show you a little video here, a uh, clip just to uh, let you see and hear the importance of this day. Um, I will be delighted to see our entire school dressed in orange shirts on Wednesday. You are always amazing at participating in important days like this. And this one ranks right up there for all of us. So make sure you've got that orange shirt on. Um, orange shirt day, the importance of uh, learning why every child matters, learning uh, the true history of our country and of our first peoples, and even more importantly, how to honor those stories, that history, and those people. Uh, so important to us as a family here that uh, we're all honored, we're all understood, and that our stories are all heard. So pretty excited about that. I want you to have a look at this quick video, and then uh, uh, this week your teachers will be talking more about uh, Orange Shirt Day, what it means, and how we can honor those stories and that history. Have a look at this. Hello everyone, my name is Phyllis Webstad. I am Shawetmch from the Strachemch, Kenu Creek, Khatlitam, Dog Creek First Nation, which is about one and a half hours southwest from Williams Lake, BC. I grew up with my granny on the Dog Creek Reserve until I was 10, then moved with my auntie after she finished university. When I had just turned six, I was sent to the St. Joseph Indian Residential School near Williams Lake, a place we called the Mission. My granny bought me a shiny new orange shirt to go to school in. When I got there, I was stripped, my clothing taken away, including my new orange shirt, and I never saw it again. I was no longer excited to be going to school. I wanted to go home to granny. I had to stay there for 300 sleeps. No matter how much all of us little kids cried, it didn't matter. No one listened to us. Our feelings didn't matter. We didn't matter. I am the third generation that attended residential school. Both my grandmother and mother attended the mission for 10 years each. Today is a day to honor and remember residential school survivors and their families. Every child matters even if you're an adult. We must also remember those children that never made it and are no longer with us. Today is a day for survivors to tell their stories and for us to listen with open hearts. I am humbled and honored that you are all taking part in Orange Shirt Day. When I was in school, I didn't know my own history, so I am overjoyed that you are taking part and learning the true history of Canada's first peoples. Gukshjem, thank you. So there's a video there just to get you uh, thinking a little bit more and starting your journey to understanding uh, what Orange Shirt Day is all about. Your teachers, of course, will be talking to you more about that this week and you'll be doing some activities and some learning with that. So looking forward to that and looking forward to Orange Shirt Day on Wednesday. Another day we're looking at this week, uh, Terry Fox Day. Uh, Terry Fox Day is normally uh, on a certain day every year, but with all of the COVID changes and things, 
that are happening right now. Uh, Terry Fox Week can actually be any day this week. And so for us, we've placed it on Friday. So here at MBE, Friday is Terry Fox Day. But even though it's Friday, you'll be doing a lot of your Terry Fox physical activity with Mr. Murray in your phys ed classes. So you'll be learning about Terry Fox for sure in your classroom. You'll extend that learning with Mr. Murray and be doing your actual Terry Fox run uh, through your gym classes with Mr. Murray this week. So looking forward to that. Many of you have already asked with uh, being a little bit different than normal and not being able to go looking for pledges. You can go on our Facebook page, the Mary Bergeron Elementary Facebook page, or our website, and there's a link on both of those sites so that you can follow that and make a donation to the Terry Fox Marathon of Hope in uh, raising funds for cancer research. This uh, year marks the 40th year for the Terry Fox Marathon of Hope, and uh uh, Terry Fox's brother has actually put together a bit of a, a message for students, and I'd like you to have a look at that now. Hi there, I'm Fred Fox, Terry Fox's older brother. I hope everyone had a wonderful summer and lots of fun with your family and friends. We're so, so excited this year. It's the 40th anniversary of Terry's Marathon of Hope, and we are so thankful for your school, for all that you've done in uh, supporting cancer research and Terry's dream. We realize it's been challenging times for everyone, and we hope you and your family are managing well and staying safe. Your Terry Fox event at your school might look a little different this year, and that's okay. Terry faced all kinds of challenges during his run across Canada, and he never quit. He worked as hard as he could to see his goals come true. So now it's up to us to continue Terry's dream uh, right across Canada, and we can't give up on doing that. Traditionally, the Terry Fox run at schools is on one day of the year and this year it happens to be on September 30th. But we're just letting you know that you can hold your Terry Fox event on any day of the school year, whether it's with uh, your classroom going out and, and participating, or it's individual students uh, having their own little Terry Fox uh, run and fundraiser um, at home while they uh, uh, start the school year at home. So on behalf of our family and the Terry Fox Foundation, Thank you for all that you do in supporting cancer research and working hard to keep Terry's dream alive. So two pretty special days for sure this week on Wednesday and Friday, but let's have a quick look and rundown of what the other special days are this week. Today, Monday, it's World Family Day. It's a day set aside to celebrate your family. Um, your family can be the people you're related to at home. Always good to celebrate and remember them. But we have other families too. You've got a school family, an MBE family. You've got a class family, the group that you're in. So lots of families. You may play sports outside of school or go to a club. Those are families too. So here's a day for you to let your family know how much you appreciate them and for you to be grateful that you belong to a family. So good day for that. Tuesday is World Farm Animal Day and we'll learn a little bit about that when announcements come around on Tuesday. But uh, if you've got a favorite farm animal, to, that might be your day to let loose. We'll see what is up with Farm Animal Day. Wednesday, of course, is Orange Shirt Day. Thursday is Custodian Appreciation Day, a day that we get to celebrate and say thanks to our custodian who is working very hard to keep this school clean, sanitized, and disinfectant for all of us. So we'll uh, definitely get a shout out to the custodians that day. And of course, we round out the week with Friday being Terry Fox Day. Also on Friday, I'm hoping that maybe for announcements in the morning, I can get another guest author in to help us uh, with a little interview and maybe a little book reading that this author has written. So we'll see what happens there. Let's have a look at birthdays this week. What do we have? No birthdays today being celebrated, but on Tuesday from 23S, Annika celebrating her seventh birthday. On Wednesday from 2J, Kingston celebrating his seventh birthday. On Friday, from 1W, Davis celebrating his sixth birthday. Then on Saturday, from KS, Ethan celebrating his fifth birthday. 
Saturday also from 2 a.m. Landon celebrating his eighth birthday and to round out the week on Sunday from 2J Evan celebrating his seventh birthday. So happy birthday to all of you. Hope you have amazing birthdays and an awesome week. All right. It is the last Monday of the month of September. So if you've been here before, you know that that is the bucket filling draw at our school. Uh, all month long, you've been working on filling each other's buckets. If you've been caught filling a bucket, your name's in that slip. And we drew those names this morning so that we could announce them since we're not in the gym doing assemblies yet. But let's have a look at our winners who will be having a McDonald's lunch brought into them. Let's see what we've got here from, let's look at the kindergartens. KS, Kira, you're getting a lunch. Good job, kiddo. And thanks for being a bucket filler. Grade one from 1K, Miley, you are a bucket filler winner and congratulations to you. In grade two, coming from 2S, Max, your name came out. You're getting a McDonald's lunch. Grade three from 2-3S, Curtis, Another winner, you're getting the lunch. Thanks for being a bucket filler. Grade four from 4DH Logan, you are a bucket filler winner and your lunch is coming to you. And from grade five to round out the list from 5D Ethan, thanks for being a bucket filler. So the six of you, I will get in touch with you. We will pick a day when we will get you an individual McDonald's lunch coming your way. And thank you so much for being great bucket fillers. The rest of you, thanks for getting your name in that draw. Just means now for the month of October, we got a clean slate and let's get those names in there. Keep being bucket fillers and we'll see who comes out next time. Good job, everybody. Well, you know, last week uh, I had Rocky the raccoon out and uh, the kindergartners got a chance to meet him uh, for the first time. And he uh, was quite a hit there. Uh, but one of the kindergartners asked me, how'd you get Rocky? And uh, I let them know that it was a, a pretty good friend of ours that uh, found Rocky out in the forest and uh, kind of brought him in here. And uh, sometimes it's easier to show you how we came across Rocky than uh, just to talk about it. So raccoons, of course, pretty cute mammals. They are mammals. Um, raccoons typically like to come out at nighttime. You can tell a raccoon usually by, if you look right here, well, Rocky, he's got a little black band here, which kind of makes him look like he's wearing a mask. And so uh, that's kind of typical of raccoons. So got a little bit of a striped tail, lots of information you can find out about raccoons, but why listen to me? Let's uh, find out where Rocky came from. Uh, with that, it's time for another edition of In the Wild with Wild Man Reynolds. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and learned a little bit about raccoons. Now we're out here in the forest back on location, and you know what we're going to do. We're going to try and find ourselves a raccoon. So if you're quiet in the forest and you uh, listen, often you can hear a lot of different animals. Let's listen in here. Yeah, you hear that? I think we've got one nearby. In fact, I think I see one. Oh right there maybe no right there 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 i spotted a oh it looks like a young raccoon let's just see Do you know what i brought this along with me uh we know raccoons like uh getting garbage so got this uh can of craft dinner here raccoon come on buddy come on here he comes here he comes yeah, look at this. Look at this. What do you think? Oh, look what we got here. We got one. Look at this. Pretty healthy looking little specimen. Uh, looking pretty good here. Uh, definitely a young a young one. Hey, you look pretty good. Oh, you see the old craft dinner, eh? Yeah, look at that, eh? Yeah, definitely liking that. Hey, pretty good, eh? You don't get that out here in the forest, do you? No, no, no. All right. So, raccoons, you know, 
uh, are wild animals, and we've talked about this before. Uh, make sure you don't approach wild animals, even if they look cute like this one here. Um, oh, just about gone. Yep, it's gone, everybody. Sorry. Uh, definitely had an appetite on, didn't you there? Yeah. Uh, don't approach these wild animals. We've learned that in the past, and we've talked about it. Um, definitely cute, but not, uh, not uh, always like this one here. So make sure... Oh, come back here. Make sure... Uh, oh, yeah, what do you want? Oh, yes, I'm sure you're still hungry, but uh, you don't, I have nothing left. Hey, no, no, I'm sorry. Come on, just settle down, settle down. Uh -huh. Not again. 